Dream Hack Open is brought to you by Astro, Monster Energy, Corsair, Hacks, and GG Bet. DreamHack calls itself the world's largest digital festival. It includes a local area network gathering with live concerts and competitions in digital art and esports. And even sweeter than that is when it's around Christmas time, like it is right this second. We have a gnome. He has taken the place of the trophy, and Lord knows what that gnome has done with it. Unfortunately, we were unable to find it in the break, but what we did find in the meantime were our two grand finalists in both Ince and Bravado. You wouldn't believe it if I told you it three days ago that that was going to be the grand final, but boy, you better believe it now because it's going to be either easy or it's going to be full of avocados. My name is Trey Serenthus, and I will be your pilot through this journey. And of course, to my left will be my co-pilots in both Pimp and Black. Guys, we're at the Grand Finals. We have arrived at our destination. Yes, we have indeed. It's going to be the Battle of the Memes, Avocados versus Easy. And of course, one would say the biggest favorite in the tournament against perhaps the biggest underdog in the tournament in the Grand Finals. It is indeed being a tournament to remember. I think that's a fair statement to make. I think we see two of the best playing teams here as well. And like sometimes you can talk about a final where one of the teams have had an easy way. You could arguably say that Bravado had a little bit of an easier task. And then again, you know, they didn't because they were being some of the best teams at this tournament. So, yeah. you know, we, we had the two best playing teams right here. And I think that's what makes me the most excited about this final. That both teams have showcased that they can play counter strike to a very high level. Well, we've got the best teams and as well the best partners that all make sure that this show runs slow and smooth and smooth is fast. I can tell you that right away. It's Astro, it's Corsair, it's Monster Energy, and Hacks GG, the official apparel sponsor of the DreamHack Open Circuit. Guys, man, do we have a, a banger, I think, because honestly, Ince is looking good. They looked in form earlier. And then if you think about Verado, I think that they're just an all-out X mark, right? Like they're an all-out question mark. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Bravado haven't lost a map at this tournament so far. And frankly, to be uh, to be fair, I think all of us expected they wouldn't win a map at this tournament. Yep. Uh, that rightfully so have been changing our mind. I think Bravado has been playing some uh, stellar Counter-Strike. I think they, game by game, they teach us more of what they're made of. Uh, so far, they won on, I believe it's Dust 2, twice on Nuke, and one time on Inferno, yep. which shows a little bit of depth in the map pool as well. So they can not only, it's not like a, a one-trick pony, it's not like a big team at a major where they just win Inferno and that's it. These guys have actually been winning different maps and they've been doing it consistently. So so find a tournament. So that excites me a lot about this Bravado team. On the other hand, we have Ince, who we just saw play a phenomenal game against Heroic, so that definitely warmed up for now. Yeah, I mean, looking at Heroic, the way they made their way to the semifinals, you're like, all right, this is a team who potentially might be the favorites as well, but in that best of three series, Ence just completely stomped them. There's no other way to put it across, right? It was a very convincing win coming out from them. And looking at this fight, like both the teams, like you said, Bravado have looked really good, Ence have looked really, really good as well, despite having that initial loss early on day one, just, uh, just the best of one against G2. So. It, it's it's, it's kind of exciting, right? It's something you really don't know what you're going to expect here. I don't think these two teams have faced off against each other yet. It's going to be, as we've been saying all this while, Trace, it's going to be a barn burner of a game. It will be that. We're going to take a look at the playoff brackets that got us to this point. In case you're just joining us, you've joined us at a ripe old time, the grand final time. Bravado and Ents squaring off on what could be three. But first, they had to work to get here. They had Existence Galaxy in the way. And they I had Heroic in the way, Pimp. What do you got in the way, man? <laughs> you right now. But uh, <laughs> apart from that, uh, Existence is uh, the other surprise of the tournament. Yeah. They made their way into the semifinal as well. That was the other, you know, qualified team at the tournament. The other team that we expected not to win any games throughout this one. We expected them to be the big underdog. But rightfully so as well. They made their way into the semifinal and they showcased against Pirata that they still know how to play Counter-Strike. Obviously, they can't be too satisfied about missing this final. But that's just the way it goes. You have two of these underdogs clashing against each other. And you can just, you know make the conclusion that Bravado were the better team of those two and Ents were the better of Heroic. But do you think it could come down to a, a clash in uh, map pools here? Is that something that could separate these two teams on the stage? Uh, I mean, because we are getting really close to what would be the maps and bands. Yeah, uh, the, the thing here is going to be Nuke, right? Nuke is something which I find very interesting. Bravado are very comfortable on this. This is a map that they play all the time uh, when it comes to, like, you know, in, in North America. But they show the confidence that, hey, you know what? I don't care who you are. EU team, you know, South African team, doesn't matter. We can take you on that map. Now, the problem is the way Ents played on Nuke as well, 
Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, the way Ends played on Nuke might make Bravado think about it. Like, hmm, do we go with Nuke here or not? Uh, I think at this juncture, when you're Bravado, in the Grand Finals of Dreamhack Open, you just play to your strengths. You've shown that you can play uh, re really good on your home ground, so just make it happen. Let's go for a new play over here. Ends might go for a train, and I'm expecting overpass as a decider. I would expect Dust too, maybe, uh, in that mix as well for one of the teams. I think both Ents and Bravada have showcased in the tournament that they can play Dust too, and they both like it. Ents have played it twice. They did have a loss to G2, but they were leading 11-4, to and then I believe they beat up to quite convincingly on Dust 2 as well. So definitely a map they won't stay away from if they have the opportunity to get yeah. it as a third map. Whereas for Bravado, we saw them win against that was Uptick as well on Dust 2, so they know how to play that map as well. Um, definitely agree with you, though. Um, one thing that, that puzzles my mind is a little bit that we heard in an interview that Bravado apparently is willing to play Six maps. They have a deep map pool, which I uh, I think is true. Uh, the fact that they, in the first video against Optic, if I remember correctly, they removed Nuke as one of the first bands, yes. yeah. which is definitely a, an interesting move because they are good on Nuke, as you said. They have played Nuke in this tournament and they've looked solid on Nuke, but they just judged, you know, that Nuke is not a map we want to play against Optic, so they can play into that map pool strength and maybe to tingle. Uh, just tingle. Tingle. Ting tingle ends just a little bit here. T tingle or tickle? Tinkle. I mean, both works phrase, right? Both, I mean, they, they do both have, uh, yeah, whatever, dude. We're not going down that road, but we do have the first two bands. Cash and Mirage are off the table. We will not be seeing that in the Grand Finals. Yeah, Cash is uh, the end of the usual perma band, right? They've just gone for it. They don't really like playing mm -hmm. on that map. Then Mirage getting banned by Bravado. Uh, it's interesting. I, I think they can really play that map as well, but they've taken it out. I'm more curious if the picks kind of be coming in. What do you have left on the table? We have Nuke, we have Overpass, we have Train. I really expect to see Train getting picked by Ents now that it's not been banned. Or it might even be seeing an Inferno coming out. I'm not too sure about it. I think Terrain will be the, the obvious pick for, for Ince for sure, and I would be surprised if that's not the case. It is Inferno coming out of Bravado, and that's an interesting one as well. Again, I think they're showcasing that they're not afraid of playing different maps. You know, we have seen them play Inferno as well. Yeah. Um, and, and that's, you know, a decent showing. They were playing that uh, in the semifinal against Existence and also winning that one, so they know how to play it. But it did go to overtime. It did go to overtime. Yeah. It was a little bit scary, but they were the team having the lead in that match, and they were maybe, you know, getting a little bit afraid of winning and getting a little bit too close to the sensation of going into the final, so there may have been something within that working. We but got sensations, we got tingling, and we got tickling. What else we got, Jacob? We got Dust 2. We so. got Dust 2. Yeah. Boom. Ooh, nailed it. Yeah, so, nice. overall, we got Train, Inferno, and Dust 2. That is the digital playground for this here. I'm a, little, I'm, I'm a little surprised that Bravado went with the final band that went with the new band, because it was right there. I kind of expect both these teams are very comfortable in Nuke, right? So Nuke being the decider, I think, would have made things very interesting over there. But the fact they've gone with Dust 2, like I said, they can play that map. They have one on that map. Uh, just ends just seems like slightly the better team in all these three maps. That's a problem here if you're a Bravado fan. Well, Bravado fans and its fans around the world start to sit back, crack open a cold one, because we did get a chance to hear from both of these teams going into this grand final. by by any means and the Warbang's there to north and they need to finish it off and Fady is just locking it down with three Sonic's still here he doesn't want to give this up he wants overtime but it might cost him the map JT has to move in and that's it we're going to overtime 15 to 15 bravado they claw the comeback it feels great I mean uh, you know we took it game by game we composed ourselves every game we had uh, we had a few tough matches there was a little bit of pressure but I think it got better and better after every game and here we are in the final. Into Alu's orb and that other gun that was picked up. Fire around what? Evan, but Ariel, hello? That's the bomb drop. No, Ariel's right. found three. We are going in very confident. We are going to play our own game. We know that we are capable of, um, like, uh, to be top 10 teams. We know that we can beat them, so we're very confident that we're going to beat them. I think they are afraid of us, pretty sure. You know, we're not satisfied. We really, really want to win this, and uh, we're probably going to be even stronger in this final. And uh, I think if we can just not see it as a final on stage and just see it as every other game, even in practice back at home, I really think we can win. They are still strong. They have really good individual play players, but we just have to play as a team, as a unit, so let the opponent know that it's going to be easy for us. Good luck. I don't really mean it, but good luck. And may the best team win. Well, we do have Bravado getting set up. They have strapped those seat belts in, and they're looking dashing, like Dancer and what are the... Prancer. Yeah, Dancer, Prancer. Anyway, whatever, they got that head honcho Detrini over there, who is kind of like their Rudolph. He has been leading the charge, at least 
front facing to us, he has been kind of telling us more and more about this team each time yep. and how much that this means to them overall because understandably, this is the pretty big statement for South African CS. Uh, yeah, and one thing which I want to point out is JT, right? He took up the reign of the reins of being the in-game leader pretty recently comparatively, but he's not just been calling some really, really good uh, Counter-Strike, but also the fact that he's been fragging as well. He's not really slacking that department. Veterany, the veteran in the side, he's been in the Dreamhack winter like four years back where they bought him down. Here is in the Grand Finals. It's a story of redemption for him when it comes to the Dreamhack uh, event, so to speak. He's been really good with the AWP. Elusive has been very elusive in those clutch rounds. He's been great. And then Sonic, the star player, but Fady is a guy I want to point out. This guy had the potential. He's always been inconsistent, so to speak, in many tournaments or online games he's played, but this tournament, he has come alive. It's not one player carrying the team. It's the entire team really stepping up to the plate and taking the fight to whoever they faced off against so far. I definitely agree. It's a team that haven't lost a map at this event so far, and I think that speaks for itself. Definitely a surprise so far, and I think the, the way they're winning the games, the way they're being proactive with the way they play, is not a team that is waiting for the opponents to come to them. They're okay with taking the fights and getting to the opponents, and I think that's such a cool thing when you consider it, you know, consider the circumstances. This is, as you said, the first time they're on a stage that is this big. So the fact that they're able to go in here and play with that sort of confidence and play with that proactiveness, I think is super, super cool to see. Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, I guess, you ask yourself certain questions when you get to this point, right? You ask yourself about coming to the Grand Final, you start to ask things like, why is Rudolph so good at answering trivia questions? Yeah, Trace, that's exactly what I'm thinking right now. Do you know why, Jacob? No, why? Because he knows a lot. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> ah. <laughs> All right, yeah, anyway, Woo. so Bravado strapped in. I do like that they have nothing to lose here. They really, yes, they can lose the grand final, but ultimately they have come in here with that, that championship mentality like, hey, this is one of those any given Sunday scenarios. We've been doing it all weekend long. Why should we stop now? But that's the problem, right? That when you come in in your first game, you're like, I have nothing to lose. We have nothing to lose whatsoever. But now in the grand finals, you do have something to lose, yeah. the championship. Well, you could be losing the championship to our next team, Int. That's right, the Finnish esports organization from Finland. They are setting up right about now, and they're almost ready to go. We did get to hear from Sergey earlier. And, uh, well, well, not a man of many words, <laughs> but he did say that Alu has invigorated this roster and has brought them to new heights, and it's showing. It really is showing. These guys are glowing when they get on when they find that form and that rhythm, and we've seen it numerous times this year so far. I think it's such a fun team to watch because they are so calm as they are. I think the way they can translate themselves in interviews, the way they appear in public, I think that's exactly the same sort of vibe they give you when they play the game. It's very calm, it's very collective, it's, it's not as fast-paced, it's not as uncontrollable, it's not chaos, it's basically just they know what they want to do, they have a plan, and they're just trying to follow it. And when it doesn't work, they're all right with it. They just move on to the next round and try to proceed with the same plan they tried before. It's, it's one of those scenarios where they it's, it makes them unique in a way, because you have so many good teams these days who play a much more loose style of Counter-Strike. Worth to mention is Mouse Balls, Face, those teams. You know, the, the star players, the star struck teams that have a lot of individual skills, they sometimes opt to go that way because that makes sense for them. Whereas Ents, I, I do believe they're not obviously a face or a mouse bot, but they have similar skill sets in terms of the players. They can play to that level. They can go up there and individually own the other teams, but they still do it as a team. And I think that makes them unique in many ways. And I think that's also why, as we've talked about, the consistency coming out of Ents, the fact that they went to Cologne, did well, the fact they went to Star Series, won that event, and the fact that they're on route to win another event right here, that makes them consistently, and that makes them unique, and that makes them a one hell of a scary opponent to face if you're Bravado. Yeah, uh, not much to add to that, to be very honest. Uh, that's the thing about this team, the, the great thing about this team, like you mentioned, they're like a stone cold killing machine. They're not going to get phased, they're not going to get affected by emotions. They're like, oh, we lost the map, it's okay, we're going to win the next two, right? And, and like you mentioned, one thing I really enjoy watching about them is even when they're steamrolling an opponent, even when it's like 14 to 3 in their favor and hunting down a player, you won't see them just running in, trying to get, like, uh, try, trying to get, go for the kills. They'll actually try to make it work and they still manage to, you know, work as a unit no matter what the scenario is. Here's a unit for you, Sergey. These numbers are are absolutely outrageous and you might think wow why does he have so many more kills that's because he's played more games <laughs> bravado punched their ticket to the semifinals early on in this tournament thus alleviating the chance for them to play as many games as sergey and ints have and that would make sense but when you look at this i said absolute unit and while on the screen you know, that may be not so much the case, but also in the server, it's very much the case. Let me paint the picture for you. The best player on the server is 16 years old. He's half Why? your age, Chris. Half your age. Close. Close. Doing some math. Um, yeah, close. Very strong side, yeah, right? Not, but he's, uh, he's by far, by far, I think, the best player on the server. He's uh, phenomenal and he's been playing a hard out tournament. And can he keep the, up that level? He may as well be the MVP for the entire thing. Well, can you keep up the level Twitch chat? It's going to be exclamation point BVD or exclamation point ENCE 
for Ents. That's right, it could be easy for him, but you gotta get your votes in there. That's the only way that we can keep the show rolling here. That's the only way I'll be able to tell you that Bravado are looking lackluster when it comes to the odds. Um, I'm, look, if there was no context behind this matchup, if you know, you're just tuning into Dream Map, would you allow Bravado ends up playing that, those odds kind of make sense. Mm -hmm. um, that would make sense. But looking at the way Bravado played so far, I think those odds that don't really represent or rather paint a clear picture, I think it would be a little bit more closer. But yes, I do agree. You know, if you're a betting person, Ents would be the team to put your money on. Well, how about we do that then? How about we talk about putting our money on teams, even though we don't bet, I don't condone betting, and actually, I don't think it's a great idea. However, I will point at you guys and ask you who you think is going to win. I'm not going first this time. You went first last time? Yep, it's his turn. Man, that kind of worked out, didn't it? Yeah, didn't it? All right. <laughs> I think uh, I think Ents have the better players. I think Ents have shown more consistency. Uh, I think Ents is a great team. Uh, not only speaking in DreamHack terms, I think Ents is a team that we need to look out for in 2019. The age of this team, the age of Sergey, he's 16 years old. Lots of space to develop as a player. I think this team is, is just a very fun and uh, entertaining team to watch and, and a team you should look out for. That said, though, I have hopes of going to South Africa sometime in my life, so I'm going to say Bobato's <laughs> going to win this game. Oh, my! He's done it. He's gone done for it. Bravado. That one was the curveball I was not expecting. Uh, and Bled, now like, I guess you're up to bat. Uh, yeah. Um, you know what? I'm still going to do my job. And I'm going to say, I don't care I'm still going to say it's going to be, I don't think it's going to be as, it's easy. It's going to be easy for Ants, but I think Ants do, are the better team here. Let's be honest about it. Bravado had a great run. They reached the grand finals. That's a huge achieve, achievement in its own right. But it look, just looking at the maps, looking at the way Ants have played so far, yes, Bravado. Just look at the wins they had, the two best of ones, close games, wins nonetheless. Then they had the best of three win against Existence Galaxy, who I kind of felt that they, they overperformed this tournament. But look at the way Ents have been playing. They've been destroying teams. They did completely dismantle Heroic in, those, in that best of three as well. So I'm just going to go with Ents here. Uh, I, just don't, I just don't see Bravado winning this, but I do hope that it's going to be a close affair. I completely agree that Ents is the better team. I just uh, think Bravado is going to win. Yeah, man, that's that usually how the predictions go. In makes fact, sense, yeah. I think I need to weigh in now. And coming in at a... May 20th, 1992. Let me take you guys in a little bit of history lesson. There was a man. He was born. Yes, it's right. It took a little bit of time for him in the oven, but he did come out. And now he finds himself centered here on the stage. He is a ripe age and has come to fruition. He is a god amongst men, and it is God Alu and Team Ents that will be taking this final. And I'm going to say it in a convincing fashion. I think it's 2-0. I believe in the bravado at South African cause. I believe in all the avocados. Big fan of guacamole, but truth be told, Ants is just a well-oiled machine right now. Please don't hate me, South Africa. Would love to check out Cape Town sometime. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, I feel much better. Yeah, I mean, we can go to South <laughs> Africa together if you want. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah. Or we could just go through the Twitch results right now and see what you thought at home, because I swear it's probably going to be a split house. And it's not really. It's actually Ants. So makes sense. You guys got anything to say to the Twitch viewers for no, that? I mean, it makes sense. When you look at the results, when you look at what happened so far, and when you look at the history of the two teams, obviously, Ents are the favorites. It makes sense. It reflects in the odds, and it reflects in the Twitch guys. That said, though, Bravado have been showing us time and time again that they are a team to be reckoned with. Let's not forget the way to the qualifier here. They were beating some pretty decent teams. Luminosity for once, Rogue as another. E United, I believe, was the third in, team. Ents was the third team, I think. Yeah, exactly. Order, yeah. So there we go. Some some pretty decent teams. So they can play Counter Strike. They can go toe to toe with guys like Ents. Can they do it on a big stage in a final? I guess we'll have to wait and see. Well, we will wait and see. But uh, I think what I need to tell you first is that if you want an all encompassing, all encompassing. I said it, I'm gonna say it one more time for you. All encompassing. Digital experience here for DreamHack Open. You need to check out Snipe. They've got the digital pass that you need. DreamHack.com slash digital pass. Head over there and pick that bad boy up so that you get the full experience in and out of the server, just like we're about to deliver right now. A high octane, best of three. Could be two maps, likely will be three. Probably 90 rounds of Counter-Strike, and you're going to want to enjoy all of this. So I hope you've got all your lickies and chewies and you're ready to jump into the action, because our commentators certainly are, and they're sitting idly by, ready to get her going. My goodness, would you believe it? Oh, what's a licky and chewy, by the way, Trace? Uh, it's like any sort of like candy that you probably like, you know. It's horrible. It's, it's not it's like horrible. a specific okay. candy, but it's like something, oh, you like to lick and chew on that. All right. Well, cool. Okay, cool. All right. All right. Yeah. thought it was something else. And who do you guys got up. in this final? How about that? Who do we have in this final? I think that you have to go with Ents. We've talked about this constant progression that they seem to be performing with. Sure, the hiccup of Epicenter. They were in DreamHack Montreal's grand finals. Yeah. They fell to Kinguin at that final hurdle, but I think they are ready to come into this one and blast some heads. I think so, too. Uh, now, after this event, you know, if they win, for example, 
they're going to be favorites moving into a lot of right. events that they play at, which is such a big step for Ants. It's so cool to have an org like this. You know, you've got Natu at the helm. They just took on a new CEO who's like a former Olympic skier, I believe. Sponsored by Samsung. Sponsored by Samsung. They're making really big moves. They have a solid lineup. It's hard from the outside to see who you would even pick as a player that is the weakest link on the team. You know, everybody's had such good rounds in this event. And, uh, you know, they don't get too excited when they win, but that's just like the finish way. I think uh, that's a good thing. Right. And I think, um, I don't know, I think it's just, it's, it's amazing. You know, the brand is really coming into fruition. You look at this logo now, and they, it holds a certain amount of weight. Yep. Yeah, you really expect a lot from ends, and that's not something that we've heard of from Finland in ever. And then you take Bravado on the other side of all this, right? They've already made history twice in terms of DreamHack Opens. They've joined a European qualified team in the playoffs. Never before has that occurred. They managed to get into the finals again, a first time instance. Never have they actually picked up a championship win. So let's see, folks. It is time for Fady to get this first duel underway and Bravado find the opening kill of this finals. Yeah, and Fady has been a monster, so I'm not surprised to see it. Detroni from back six has got an important position, but he has a teammate to help him out. Alu has made his way up a train, but won't get down the ladder safely. Sonic's the one who gets tagged, however, and he's in a pretty good spot. Oof. It's a simultaneous gush and an accidental burst. Ariel's still trying to just skewer this site, but taken back into the advantage is Bravado. However, it's a ruse. They're so preoccupied with that A bomb site that Alexi B sneaks the plant through on the opposite side of the map, and his teammate's trying to rush over as quickly as possible. That's X7. Remember, Alexi, he's got the Molotov. And the kit, nowhere to be found. Yeah. For Bravado, they're already on the bomb site, and that's a preemptive Molly. Down instantly, just like Elusive once he reaches the top of the ladder, and it's an additional peak from Alexi, just peppering them back and pushing JT into a very awkward spot. Yeah, it was a preemptive Molly. If the Molly went down a little bit later, you guarantee the bomb doesn't get defused, but in this situation, they had to defend it, they had to get their kills, they also got those, so that's a solid way to start this uh, final off, and um, I really felt like Ents were going to hit the ground running just because they did play a best of three just now, and they had 30 minutes to chill out, you know, so they're, they've are they got to cool down after they warmed up, and now that they're back on the server, I actually wonder if Bravado are going to be able to get focused as, as quickly as Ents can. Right, for the Bravado fans, though, I got to say, like, these guys are dedicated to the cause, obviously, huge opportunity. The moment the previous teams in that semifinals cleared out of the booths, mm -hmm. we had Bravado sitting down to practice. Yeah, good for them. So they've been there for like at least 45 minutes, nearing an hour. Mechanically, they should be ready to go. But we watched Ents tear through Heroic on this T side of train. Yeah, they looked amazing. Only player that really delivered from Heroic was Esatag, but it was everyone on Ents that was really going in. Fady gets a dink off, or gets dinked actually. Galil Spray finishes him off. The flash was good, and he tried to use his body to bait him into shooting and staying out in the open to eat the flash, which was successful, but it was at the cost of his whole life. Not even really much damage back the other way. Sergei's still fine on 87. We have this pressure over towards IV2, so Ents already having this advantage in weaponry. They just want to keep Bravado as spread out as possible. Mm -hmm. There are two scouts currently on the board between Elusive and Detrani. That means one of which still here towards Z. So a scout and pistol per bomb site. I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't move a single player. Just as you're pointing out, they've got the, an even spread of, of weaponry across both sites, and that smoke can try to juggle a rotation. They're baiting them into stacking over at B, leaving Sonic alone at Ivy only to go down. Oh, oh, though. Damn. Nice snap. Straight down goes Sergey. Aldo attempts to close that gap, and Detrini's caught over. He's still going to have a player back in TT spawn, but that's the last man up. Unfortunately for Bravado, the force buy not paying off. Yeah, it falls a little bit short, but you like the setup. You like the guns they use and where they put everybody for sure. So not another kill to be had. And Alu turning up the heat, spam in the body, BM in chat. But you do want to get in their heads. Yeah, of course. It's, I mean, it's, it's you saw in the thing. player interviews, right? And saying that we feel as though they fear us. Right. Um, and even if you are bravado, confident as you should be coming off of all of these steps previously to the, for the finals, uh, I mean, let's be real. Uh, this could be the hardest hurdle. It will be for sure, yeah. This is, uh, you know, Ents were one half of the teams that most analysts expected to make it to the finals. And maybe semis. We've got the tier leader stack in Ivy. Yeah, you see that on the old bomb from time to time. This, mm -hmm. one's, this one's fresh, but I like it. There's been this consistency towards Ivy already. And I mean, who expects five USPs in a corner? It's the dog pile. The dog pile. All right, X7. Does he just clean up? Or does he have a big surprise? <laughs> He's going to be wondering about that. Yeah, there's something going on here. 
Good flashback. They try to dodge it. And sure, one for one trade's not bad. Yeah. Unfortunately, now they've all been corralled into the corner. As the bomb goes down towards B, there is no escape. Yeah, they are alone and they get melted. So minimal losses, two kills here, one kill on the previous round. The economic tally is not that high for Bravado, but it's not bad. It could be worse. And especially to get those two kills without armor, without upgraded pistols, is a feat in of itself. So now we get to move on to a proper rifle round after we witnessed a force up, which is not something you see all that often anymore. Um, it's more often than not, you see the CT team just wait until they can get full guns here. They, they use an extra round to do it, but that's okay for them. Alu going to be on the op, and there's one in response in Detrini who is holding down Z, very standard peak. Sometimes you see a, 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 a battle where someone could flash over Tikon and Alu could take position on, on Z, and then when that flash pops, it's understood he might peak, and then you have that same flash in response to get them to try to be the first ones to fall for the bait. Sergey wary of some close presence. Sure enough, Beatty had just come up the ramp. So it's a one and done. Sergey's going to move forward now, could apply a bit of pressure. And while Alu does pick up Elusive, it's Sonic's secondary op that trades one straight back. So the numbers stay even, but there's still three AWPs in this equation, all of which are just circling around this A site. So it's an opera's paradise. Duels can be had. We've seen Alu take this train and creep down the other side. He does it once more. Yeah, it's one of his favorite moves, apparently. It's going to be self-conscious about the fact that he made noise coming off the ladder, but there wasn't actually anyone around to hear it. In fact, we could see Detrini, Detrini had his, his uh, line of sight on T-Con, and he knows where one more opponent is. Of course, Sonic's op firing off. Wouldn't be surprised to see Sonic just go for the quick flank, run all the way around T-Spawn, but he doesn't want to leave his teammate stranded and alone. So he'll double back, and all who gets leg. Yeah. But if you poke the beast, it may bite back. He is still standing with 20 seconds on this clock. And he's just going to play it patient, as he did when he went over top of the trains. He'll prioritize the bomb plant, and that's at least money in the back pocket. This is such a better rotate than going into inner, knowing that someone could be in Z. It's such a fast rotate for the CTs. They can beat you up every time, and he hits the op shot. He it's knows. a one-on-one, -on -one, but he's favored. I don't care how much health he has. And oh my goodness, JT just too quick on the position, has the rifle up, and because Alu only needed one spot of damage, if it wasn't a headshot and he was full HP, maybe, so. All is so cool in those situations. For sure, right? yeah. Even, even, I would say, previously in the round when we see him just climbing over the trains, he's taking it step by step, no rush, mm -hmm. and sure enough, he sniffs out some openings. So very well done on his behalf. Even the bomb plant, making it costly. It's a good first round for Bravado, but when you come in to your first round win, after purchasing two ops mm -hmm. and only walk away with one player alive, we know they are so susceptible to a reset, and it's exactly that which dismantled Heroic's attempt at a CT side versus Ant. Yeah, no doubt. It is uh, an economic stranglehold to, on yourself to buy two ops and, and risk losing them, and then, as you mentioned, only saving one. It's, it's a pretty big hit. Now, they don't get to go with the game plan that they wanted to out of the last round, and uh, Ants have actually turned up the pace quite a lot, which I much prefer. Trying to charge out from Tcon and Ivy. It's a very quick split versus guys like Sonic. So he gets pressured from two directions and falls first. Ents establishing advantage now, and the Bravado players are just kind of corralled within the bomb site. They've got a little bit of cover and an offer. No armor on Detrini, so he needs these clean, swift shots. But Elusive, he could emerge from the smoke. He could completely blindside this Ivy player, but unfortunately, if he does so, he is the last man up, and you know this save must be tantalizing. And he's not even going to have the chance. Yeah, really well done. I like, first of all, the pace change because you know that it's, it's going to be a rebuy up after they lost the two ops. They're not going to have that much money left over. They buy what they can. They don't have the initial grenades to stop any fast outside hit. And then with the back six smoke, the, the whole idea outside is that you zone everybody into, the, uh, into behind the bomb train by Z. And then once they get there, you see how bad decisions get made. They try to jump up on the train. They have to peek towards ladder. But these are all obvious things. And so, you know, they smoke them out of back six, make them rotate around and just have them, force them into making really risky moves. Back on pistols for Bravado. They're going to kick it off with an inner push. There's two people here, and the one dig is good. It's actually Fady going one for one, which is fine. He got tons of info just now. Well, he knows they're in a default, so there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of play here for 
the rest of his team to make, but at least they should know that they should be aware of ladder, for example, so Detroni is now in a very favorable spot. Yeah, it's not a super particular bit of information, right. but just knowing they're in a default, you can see how Bravado come off of the Ivy side then. Yeah. There's numbers up here in the box halls, so at least just use that little bit of info to close the gap. Like it always could be Ivy, for example, which is right. so much farther away. Um, but yeah, ladder being kind of the middle of the map here for Ents. They sense this B hit because of Fady's sacrifice. I love this setup. So Detroni's the linchpin. If they go down, he might get one or two, but he'll get info early enough for them to rotate. And if they go in or they've got three on a stack and they have him on a fast rotate. Right. We have Elusive within the bomb site. Can always be a tricky position. Sonic as well has the cover from above. JT wants to make that first bit of contact. He wants the close proximity kill. But if they all circumvent these pistols by charging up and above, they'll have that high ground advantage. They're just going to try to bombard down into the bomb site. X7 just flies inwards, and sure enough, Elusive finds one, but it's the AKs that pan out, and while Detroni's hot on their heels, it's going to take some beautiful deagle plays. Mind you, the bomb carrier is incredibly lit, so a single shot would do it. Oh, but Alexi B, he manages to get it through and through, and then Ariel strikes from behind. Oh, you've got a feel for him. He did the right play. He, you know, it was good that they smoked a bomb number one just in case, even though they were expecting him to come from uh, the Z rotate, but uh, him waiting to kill the opera as the bomb is going down while one player's hands are busy is, I think, the smartest thing he could have done. And that was, that was a nice cleanup by Alexi. So, yep. you know, without those two kills, they didn't expect to run into three players. So, of course not. Could Therefore, have ugly. great outcome for Bravado. For sure, yeah. Lots of damage done. See all, if they can do it yet again. All that money counts for something. But yeah, back on pistols. Kind of a deco. Another inner push coming up. Two players this time, JT and Fady, joining hands. Right, it's the same setup as the previous round, but with two players here to try and maybe counter out the heavy numbers that they figured out in the previous round. So that little tidbit of info Fady got last round was useful for the stack, but it's also useful for the setup in the follow-up. Good calls by Bravado, but unfortunately you're still at such a disadvantage that Mac 10s rip right through you. You don't have to be too cerebral on the Ecos. You just got to make a couple sensible decisions about yeah. how you want to stack. Hey, this is what we saw last round. Let's try this. And you just, just give it a shot, you know? Why not? You've got nothing to lose except for a couple of $500 pistols. But uh, for Ents, they're fine. They, they won these two Ecos. They took a little bit of damage, but they come out ahead. They know they're going up against a rifle round next round, so they can kind of telegraph the play. I think for Bravado, they've got to be worried about another fast outside. They're very susceptible to it. They didn't throw any of the correct, correct grenades for a fast outside, so we're totally unprepared. Here, they've got some impact grenades, and they have an HE at the very minimum, so they could stop this. A flash is, funnily enough, one of the most important things, but as we can see, just Alexi jumping out with his head down allows them to go up confidently. Yep, sure enough. Detronate, not expecting such aggression. He also had a nice angle over top of the Smoke's edge, but he finds JP walking forward. Good shot for Fady. Close hit. Land the no scope and instantly ends flood into the B site. It is theirs. Elusive may try to get in here and find a bit of damage control, but what are you going to do? Two versus three retake attempt if they opt to go for it, but with no grenades, you can't cover off that distance. And Alu plucks one from above. Sonic's op now twice as valuable. So you know he's going to save. Yeah, you, you know he's going to save. And so you know this fast outside continues to be a problem. And there, I'm surprised. I saw the flash go in, and it is very important. You bounce the flash hard off the wall, and it bounces off blue train, and then you can just blind anybody who tries to come out. But Alexi dodges it, and that's the only thing they have. So they don't have any insurance policies. You can't put all your eggs in one flash, even though it is an important flash. And I'm surprised Bravado didn't anticipate something like that to happen with Ents knowing that they got away with it so easily. I'd like to see on this next rifle round for them to take precautions, use a couple extra grenades to stop any T-Con presence, and not allow something like, like such a liability like this to occur. They even had the smokes to support him on the Lurk, um, but it's just such a common thing to do. Right? This is what Olaf popularized so much, working outside by himself, even having you know, a spot named after him. Bravo making the most of their pauses, calling one early. This is starting to slip out of their control, undeniably. I don't think it's entirely surprising. I mean, Ents have become synonymous with Train, mm -hmm. right? It's one of their home turfs. It's like seeing them on Mirage, definitely two of their strongest suits. And if you're Bravado, having watched Ents destroy Heroic earlier today, mm -hmm. You know, how much weight do you put in this first map? Definitely. Oh, the artillery barrage. Gotta like to see this, you know. That's when you know the, the cogs are spinning. The screaming memes. Very difficult to throw these nades well placed, and that's how you line it up. Um, but, yeah, it's like, nice. oh, if they went out at the same time, which is the other thing that's very hard to do, Alu could have potentially gotten killed. 
that's not a favorable spot for JC, but he comes away with a 1D, so that's a big W. Elusive still holds on to his frag. He's currently sitting within Z, so if he waits long enough, could have maybe happened, but Alu, hesitant, and rightfully so. They'll nab back an advantage here and try to group up, utilizing one of the strengths that we identify with Ents, and that's team play. Definitely, and yeah, when they've made presence outside, they've been able and prepared and ready to split inner if they have to, if they lose a player outside or if they get the kills they need to. So they're, they're, they're working with moving parts, and they're very comfortable doing so, and that's one of the biggest threats with them is that they seem to waste no time. So now we've got to walk back to inner. Last time, Bravado called this out by stacking. This time around, it's just going to be elusive. He might hear something. I don't think just yet, but he will now have visuals. Oh, Finds the tag damn. to follow. Decent enough, however. Already so many players near that the trade seems inevitable. Two versus two. Yet again, a fruitful endeavor in terms of the eco rounds. Bravado yeah. dealing damage oh. and furthering it with another. Why not? Why not take this chance? Because you have Detrini coming in from behind. Bomb has just been planted. Sure, there's no kit in this equation, but they don't have to wait too long before we really get this rolling. Yeah. The shots from downrange, that calls Alexi's attention, and sure enough, here comes Detrini. He's gonna walk wide, find it, and that's Bravado with an eco win. Well done, well done. Yeah, they had to do it at some point, and on a comeback, it's nice to see it happens on an eco, even though it's surprising that it happened to Ents with such a dominant half to start things off. You know, players over 10k at the moment. But uh, this will be nice because now we won't have to witness like potentially another reset right away. You know, they pick up an op here, so they won't have to buy that. That's an extra almost 6K in the bank. They want to think about also increases their odds of winning this round. We just want a good game, right? We yeah. want to at least make this competitive to some extent. So they go ahead and couple that op with another. Uh, and that's to answer Ents, who actually don't have any there. Oh, no, no, they do. Sorry, Alu has one. Obviously retaining it. Flashbang's quick, nicely timed, but one of two ops pays off already. Straight out the gate, Alexi's down. But Alu responds. Okay, so here we're in the 4v4. Alu gets caught off guard. That's the kill they needed. Would have liked to see what the adjustment would have been if they needed to get map control, and Sergey is right there and ready. So fast. He is so fast, yeah. Calculated with those peaks, knows just when to stop himself as to not expose himself to the scopes. Remember, two ops still in this one for Bravado. And yet again, both within this A site. Ariel's gonna test them. Takes one to the leg. Right under the train. Into the ankles. They're gonna redirect themselves. The mid rounding has been good. I like the decisions that Ents have made. I think it has become quite common for them to go inner, but that doesn't mean they're going to go inner this round. I don't mind. I don't mind that Bravado are playing two outside. Fady can contribute here with frags alone. He's in a strong spot. He also has a Molotov. He is able to fall back off the train and have to execute quite soon. So you know it's not going to be a fake. So the rotations can come in. It's going to come down to if he gets flashed here and he doesn't. He can pick up frags and those CTs are coming over. Double locks on the retake, so he needs to do some sort of defense. And sure enough, Molly down, forces defeat. It's over towards the bomb site. The bomb itself does go, but towards ramp is where he takes down Ariel. Fady erects the defense, and he pushes all the pressure to the shoulders of X7, who has now crept behind him. But 14 seconds left. He needs to pull the trigger. Not before Detcherny finds him, however. Mm -hmm. That right there is Bravado with another round on the board. Really well played from Fady. You know, staying alive, playing his spot to perfection, not feigning when he knew the flash came over just because he could have got scared. And um, they had no idea he was going to take high ground in that situation. So he, uh, you know, with or, whether or not he gets the third kill, it's just a fantastic round by him. A 3v3 one for Bravado. That's a very important stat line, in my opinion. So the mid round, it can be very hard for teams uh, that are maybe less experienced or just, you know, under pressure, because that's when the communication gets really strained. And they showed up. So now uh, they retain the two ops, which is big, big for them. JT is going into ladder. We haven't seen a lot of ladder shenanigans or antics so far. I think in all the times we've seen train so far this tournament. Fady up ramp. Doesn't decide to wait for Ents to make their move. He shows his hand first. Oof. That's a big whiff. Line up that molly. Been pressured back by the flash and then the smoke to follow suit does the exact same thing. By the time he finally gets out of position, he's met with an additional piece of utility. Mm -hmm. Blanketing this bomb site in smoke. Yep. Shrouding vision. And ready for the retake attempt and Elusive kicks it off strong, first and foremost. However, the opera's over towards Spindles and Sergei's waiting for his head. Alu near omnipresent. 
consistently trying to cut down numbers. And this double op set up again, right? I feel like in the previous round, when we had all the pressure on Fady, it was going to allow Sonic and Veterany to save these ops if he died instantly. Mm -hmm. Same thing here. They've kept those ops in the back line, and it enables the retreat. It's a big pickup by Alu, just to really shy them away. And uh, because they, they keep the more expensive guns, they're not going to be too shook by this. It is just a big round for Ents to win because they only continue their lead after getting shaken up just a bit. But uh, either way, I, I still see Bravado being able to take more rounds in this half. They look pretty good so far. Ents just had the, the fastest route to getting the 6-1 with you know the, the hard reset, um, the pistol early on. Still a lot of good things to say about both teams. I think it might have been too volatile of a play to try to walk up the ramp without any utility at an awkward timing. If you do it right at the beginning of the round, you may be trying to catch someone off guard, but you put yourself at risk of anything happening if you walk up in a 40 seconds into a round where they might just be finishing clearing out brown halls. They want to now walk down the ramp, and that's kind of where he got caught. I can see the temptation though, right? You walk up and like you say, you don't know what's on the other side. For yeah. all he knows, he comes around the corner to grenades in their hands. Yeah. Unfortunately for him, there was not just one, but two players prepared for his push. Uh, yeah, I see. Okay. I was wondering if Ents were going to do something fast outside. So the two smokes that they're throwing here, this is just a feign to try to bait out utility because they know they've been susceptible to all of these fast rushes. But... Bravado haven't bitten, and they don't bite again. This time it pays off. I can see the thought process for Ensign, why it makes sense. <laughs> oh, that's some pretty movement from Alexi. Flames extinguished, but not the threat. JT still left forward here. Hello, hello. Nice. Wow, wow. That's about as good as it gets. And another one. <laughs> the Molotov down. That's going to disrupt everything. They Look still get their smoke off, but did. yeah. Everything versus Sergei and Alexei comes from JT's utility. That was great grenade play. And on top of that, it makes his job of spraying them down so much easier if they don't perfectly counter flash him and Elusive. Ariel and Alexei just tearing this bomb site open. Fady's going to be on the flank and Detrini high and above, cowering, and I don't blame him. There's a lot of threats looming near. That's unbelievable. It's so difficult to stay composed in that situation. You're getting naded from nades you've never seen before right <laughs> at the top of ladder while you're sitting in your spots to line things up. And then they, they're they able to find a good timing to flash down. They time that perfectly where the ladder player is also blind. Alexi gets the kill. And then they swing out and another flash comes and, and it comes over Tcon to blind her e-box, man. And then there's no chance for Bovado to get their feet on the ground. So super well, with super good response from uh, Ents. Just really impressive. Right, praising the grenades of Bravado. Just because, of course, you see it visually, the damage that Sergey and Alexei sustained. However, like you said, those flashbangs were perfect. So utility play, the name of the game in this round for both teams. And in the end, it's Alu and Ko's yet once more. And look at that. Flash pops right behind him. So he found the exact angle. JT's blind, elusive blind. This is exactly what you want when you're executing on T side. You're trying to kill all CTs blind if possible. You can't always rely on flashes, but when they're that good and you have ways outs where you're, you have more outs where you're throwing more than one flash, you know, not putting all your eggs in one basket, you can, uh, you can get away with stuff like that and uh, leave Bravado more confused than anything else. Substantial early damage versus Bravado. Sonic. Lucky to be alive, but they swarm into Tcon and they take control of it. All the while, Ents, they've trickled out from Ivy, looking to take some counterplay, but what is this? Bravado, with USPs, have managed a five versus two. They've gotten their paws on an AK and a Mac-10. Let's see if Alexi and Sergey can swing it back their way. Oh, more damage. It's coming in from multiple directions. He's pinched with bomb down, Sergey with everything to do. They've been creative in disadvantaged situations, but this was just a bit too much. Those kills came in such quick succession, and they put up a good fight, but man, Bravado just swiped that one right back. That's a pretty pretty nutty plays from all players. And you, you know, they've got USBs. They have to hit like the shots of their lives to yep. be able to uh, surmise that, but uh, they do it. So that's, that's some pretty good stuff. We're moving into the last rounds of the first half, and Bravado have two Ecos to their name, a couple of good rifles. Uh, one, I think one inner hold, one outer holds, but in general, Ents have many, many options left over. Their playbook goes deeper. We haven't even seen them use or utilize IV to any meaningful extent just yet. 
So if I'm Bravado, I'm scared of many things at the moment. Yeah, I mean, one of the first times we see really ladder room even come into the equation, and look how smooth it was from Entz. Like you say, the playbook runs deep. Like Counter-Strike in Finnish Blood. Another round where there's not any attention drawn to Ivy. I love to see a T-Con smoke like this from the CTs. It's really difficult to think about how you deal with it and move into another site when you assume a CT has this much information because even if they're not sitting in T... Oh my god, okay, well, that's your answer, right? That's, that's all you have to do. Just hit six bullets straight through <laughs> uh, uh, one of the densest walls in the game. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, <laughs> no problem. Petrini feeling pressured towards this B site, and sure enough, Bomb is in tow. But when do Ents decide to go? Fortunately for Bravado, they still don't know which site it is, in fact. So he'll float back towards the connector. 30 seconds for Ents to decide. So much utility for them to blanket the Bomb site yet again. We've seen them pre pretty much just counter the defensive and the rotations with this utility. All the while, X7 will draw attention back towards A. They're going to try to sporadically get back in it. Detroni rotates over. Upper's smoked off, so he doesn't find his target despite Bomb being planted now. This is the second to last round, and Bravado have some money. So even if they have a very low chance of winning this retake, they might think about it. I think it, for them it comes down to if a kill comes early, or if it's not very labored, they don't take much damage for it. But it doesn't seem like they found that, so they're just going to move off. It was good on Ents to not peek. They did what they had to do. Molly goes down just in case there's somebody trying to lurk up. Alexi sits in the smoke, waiting for an opponent, but nobody shows face. And that's a round in the book. Another good mid-round from Ents. The numbers are getting low. There's trades back and forth, but most of the time, Ents' lurker outside has been amazing. He's always getting a kill, and they're doing a really good job of getting the opening frag. Alu chiming in when he needs to. It's not like he's been the star of this map, but that's not... That's not what he has to do at the moment. They're, so, they're up in so many rounds. Right, we've got Alexi and Surrogate up there on the scoreboard, and Alu's there with them, but again, it's impactful frags from him. And See that's how many bullets he has? <laughs> you know, that's so like, a, yeah, you, you, people will do damage there, and then they'll switch off and think, all right, well, I don't know if he was there. I hope I did damage. But that's, that was maybe even 10 plus bullets. I don't know. This is one of those situations where everything's just coming into place for Ents. Your Opera's firing off. Your two general carries are up there, too. Consistently convincing Bravado to save, but save no longer. The final round of the first half, and Fady's already on half his health. I appreciate him going to try to be aggressive. They have had some creative ladder plays to help the CTs out in the early round, and I honestly feel like he could do it again, and maybe you, you don't get smoked by an insane outside execute. They did a lot of good stuff there. Now going for T-Cock control is beautiful. JT getting two frags. X7 can't even trade because of the Molotov, and the smoke to deny him any vision or any hope of getting back what they just lost. Very well pieced together there. Bravado and Co. However, Sergey, of course it's Sergey. Right. Finds another cracking opening, and he does this in disadvantageous positions. You can see Sergey's leash taken off. And when he's allowed to run rampant, he's always good for at least two. However, nothing further. Despite him being all the way forward on the B site, X7 was not yet there, so he's turned tail, tucked back towards A, and we'll find it for the most part open. The Molotov indicates his presence nearby. While Bravado are sectioned away, even a bomb plant's not going to mean too much because he needs to follow suit. Final round upon us. And X7 comes off his plant. Can he pull this out? Not when he's being flanked. The headshots are there, but none are his. Five rounds for Bravado. Nice. Yeah, they end the round, they end the half with at least one more round. I don't think that this means that they're out of it. They're, 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 they're low, but they're still doing okay. Uh, I think they are okay on train. They're happy to be here. Ents as well, but uh, this was a good CT round in general. Just the, the way that they were fighting for map control, which is nice. I haven't had to harp on the fact that they haven't been too aggressive on CT side. They found options. I think they just weren't as maybe fluid as they could be. Like, they didn't actually push all the way down Ivy once in that half, which that would have been a good play to make, right? They would have got a lot of info. And it's all about just trying to ease up on rotates. Like, if Ents are going to be able to find opening kills so often, you have to be just as proactive to try to get map control in response if you can't get a kill back. You know, if Alu just gets a kill from Tcon, for example, with an op, and you can't trade it. Yeah, I have to say, I was, like, individually very much impressed with JT's A defense, mm -hmm. right? I feel like uh, you always look to players who have to play difficult positions, yeah. and you see how well they, they can, you know, just control certain situations. JT, first of all, the utility play from Ladder Room, yeah. I hadn't seen that before.
Yeah. That sweet angle work with those frags and whatnot. And then you follow it up two rounds later, and he charges into Tcon again with this perfect volley of grenades. The flash for the peaks, the Molotov to deny that third player's trade, and the moment the Molotov is extinguished, you got a smoke in your face to walk back with your five versus three. So really cool stuff on the aggressive A play. But like you said, it's not everywhere across the map that we see them with those sorts of setups. Mm -hmm. Ivy, never really in the equation. I would say ramp towards the B site at times looked weak, maybe just mismatched on the timing. You saw them replace the ramp walk up with that opera in the depths of the brown halls. But that's all over, folks. The first half concludes, and we've got now Entz on the defensive with a pistol kill already. Got a wonky six smoke. I don't know if they're actually going to run up. Yeah, they're going to use this to try to get through sandwich. No, they push right through to catch them off guard, but X7 is too prepared. Dancing around the bomb site. Everybody picks up their frags. The utility from Alexi V never even needed. He'll move forward with it all. And Ent, smooth sailing to start the second half. That was nasty. You know, they threw the smoke and they ran through it just because they didn't want it to be watched while they put pressure on the other two choke points on the other side of them. But even after getting the first bullet off, X7's reactions were too perfect. And they couldn't make anything of it. So that's the second pistol in the book for Ent. They've got Bravado back on pistols themselves. And it's not going to be a four, so they're not going to throw any Hail Marys. They're going to cool down, wait for the next round where they can get AKs and try again there. Congregation of the T's towards ladder. It's actually, oh, gonna be an inner walkout potentially. Not a single flash in sight, gonna go off contact. They've been spotted, do they actually run? It only gets harder from here. Thomas at a distance will be fine. Sergey having slapped the MP5, moves forward with it. Could deny plant and does. That's no money for Bravado either. All they were really looking for is they threw their flurry to the B site, utterly dispatched of. Yeah, it's a QB sneak. They just wanted 10 yards. They couldn't even get that. So it's a big find and that is the difference. There's definitely this like a dichotomy of players or teams, I guess, that will play aggressively on anti-ecos. I much prefer when teams play close up because the plan is huge for the terrorists. There's going to be more rounds for them to buy on train just because of how easy the bomb plan is on B site. And um, for that reason, I think it's valuable to try to defend it, even if that means you're putting a CT at risk. So these are the nades that we want to see uh, Bravado throw, right? They've got the they've got that flash that bounces hard off the wall, but they also have the molly. So if someone tries to jump out behind the train while well, they're sitting in fire and they're blind. JT making the most of the smoke and getting close to it. We had Ents nearby, but they've already trickled back into the bomb site. Four defenders on A. Next seven caught as he sprays his MP9. Frag could follow suit with the kill, and it does. He's faded away. Alexi B though. He's taken off the E-Box. And Ariel's still within the trains, doing good work. Maintaining the even ground and looking hungry for more. But Sergey looks to combine with him. If he can flush this player off E-Box, there's the trade potential there. But now he's still on the cover and JT gets the double. Both from left to right. However, Alu not in sight. And he's rotated over. Yeah, bombs back in spawn. This is going to slow things down quite a lot. They're going to be worried outside. There's a chance here for Alu to try to equalize. And Elusive just wants to make sure there were no uh, shenanigans on the outside. Or uh, at Ivy, maybe, like a giant flank through. And Alu is in incognito mode at the moment. They don't know that he's in Z. They might guess there. There's probably like a 30% chance that they're expecting him here. He misses the flick. JT. Had a round and a half. Four kills for him, and he is the IGL. Uh, I think a player that was brought up on the analyst desk is one that has been, like, not expected to be, you know, yeah. top three on the team. But this tournament has been fantastic, individually speaking. And you could say that in this day and age, that's just expected. That, you know, you can't have a player that just lags behind every single map. Uh, but it is great to see him showing up in a final. This is a pretty stellar performance by him. Six rounds of difference now, and still have a strong lead. But once again, a good rifle round as soon as they're able to buy guns in the half. Oh, there's op. Trying to peer over top of the trains, but no angle found as of yet. Oh my god. That's quick, dude. That is very fast. I officially retract my statement. <laughs> <laughs> What's next? Ariel, you want to get aggressive? You could. But if he does so, there's two T's awaiting his arrival. They're just trickling all around. Another one. <laughs> I just saw just a faded image of DJ Khaled. Bob, how did he say that? Another one. <laughs> <laughs> all right. 
swap some guns and set up shop. This is still a, an unpressured situation now. You know that Alexi and X7 are liabilities, but you can offer them up to the gods for information in return. Here comes the pinch out from Tcon. And Ariel's giving his position away, not expecting Sonic to be right there so fast. 2v2 back on the table. Round could be Rivados. But do they anticipate Sergei's flank? Remember, just working with the Deeg. Alu's going to give them the majority of the bomb site. Sergei will pry outwards for some sort of information. Where did Bravado go? Nobody seems to know, but eventually it's going to reveal itself because there's 15 seconds left over, and of course he does. Sergei between the eyes and Alu up close with the op. 13 rounds for Ents. Cool and collected yeah. in those sorts of mid-round situations. Just when they needed him, and again, the mid-round is what's so strong for for Ents. And there's just a num there's just a laundry list of things that you can say are so good about this team, but you know, look at those reactions. That's a, such a hard shot to hit. And if you're prepared, you can hit a shot like that every time. But it's not that, you, you know, you're like half prepared because you're like, all right, maybe he jumps, maybe he doesn't. Um, and then on top of that, you've got to deliver on the spot. So good stuff from Alu. I like how pesky Bravado have been at Ivy. They've almost always sent one player. And here's the response. They're getting the Ivy push out from Ents, and they know that they're probably farming against an eco. They tried to force the situation and push those kills into the into the SMG, which I totally respect. But look at this. Could this be another eco? Maybe the third. This time they've got a little bit more to work with. Remember that MP9 and Galil now in the equation, but Alexi can spray nothing more than one. Alu, you know he's got to be sweating. Oh, wow, look how deep that smoke is. That's cool. There we have oh it. Oh my god, okay. Sick round from Bravado. Keeps the minute, right? Denies Ents that, that 14th point. I'm not against the IV push. You know, I think it's uh, it's good that they use their MP. They try to weaponize the MP9, the cheaper weapon to get information. They know if they lose it, they only lose the MP9. But it was really just everybody that got that uh, that, that got killed way too easily. I think that's actually eco number four, Connor. For, it is. Yeah, for Correct. bravado, which is it's actually not a good thing at a certain point, right? If you don't have a lot of rounds in total, if it's this like half of your rounds come from ecos. Yeah. I mean, that's when you're, you're kind of just looking at each other like, why can't we do this when we have better guns? Here comes what could be the fast split. Let's see if Ents can rob an eco of their own. They do have a 5 for oh substantial God. damage. Three kills off of the initial hold. Bravado not knowing what just hit them, but it's not over yet. Hot damn, Launders. Hot diggity damn. Ents could give chase, but at the same time, they've picked up two of the AKs. So they'll cool off their jets and double back. Bravado take their time here. Minute five on the clock. They can go down lower. They want to span up, fan out the rotates, and they do get a couple of players to leave. It's just X7 now on the backup bomb, and this is a comfortable spot from him. He's got players in the back lines to cover his rotate, but uh, that's a big kill from Detrini. The bomb could actually get taken down. It's now going to be a 1v1. X7 knows where his opponent was last spotted. And he's also low. The tap, does he bite on it? Looks like Detrini has no choice but to wait. Oh, oh my one god. One bullet. One bullet either way gets the job done. Detrini lands it on the flying AK, soaring out. No kit, low HP. Yeah. And still, Detrini nabs it. And that's the two in a row, right? We got back-to-back -back rounds for uh, for Bravado, so that's a good start. And this is such a fantastic round from Detrini. Don't even know where that shot came from. And look at that. The shadow. He tried to be close enough that he was in position to stop it if he without having to run. Yeah. But that puts him in a position where X7 realizes that if he's baited him at least that far, he just has to try to get any damage in. Just goes for the jumping spray. I don't even blame him for doing it. I'd be a bit frustrated if I was Ents to lose a round like that on top of the ecos that keep happening. You know, at what point do Bravado smell blood in the water, right? That, at what point do they shake off the nerves if they have any? And they see that we can do this. Not a map done by any means. Ents take a pack, attack pause. They've got to be thankful for the fact that they picked up that fourth eco in this match already because that's the one that dodged their hard economic reset and then puts Ents' economy in question. So this advantage here in the 22nd and potentially 23rd round all comes off the fact that they did that fast split with just pistols. But speaking of fast, it's a quick push up from Ents. Nets them just one kill. Bravado seemed ready for it in terms of numbers. Everybody prepared. Guns up, damage down, and only Sergei standing. Bravado will trickle into the A site despite limping in. Still poised to take it. I don't know Bravado that well, but I think what we saw was just, you know, a running execute that they would like to use on anti-eco, specifically versus pistols. But 
It's, a, it's something that can also work versus rifles, where basically everywhere you throw smoke, they throw fire. So if anybody's camping around the back of a train, anything back six, anything on the bomb train itself, it just gets mollied out, and all the, the easiest spots for pistols to stand and wait, like this one, for example, um, can't be stood in safely. And that's kind of all you have to do. Running execs can be really nice. We see the damage was dealt. There's a lot of players low, and so they came close, but uh, Bravado delivered. They keep four up. There's a chance here for Sergei to make magic happen, and you know he can. Don't want to write him out just yet. But it seems like they've finally gotten to safety. Of course he gets one kill. Yeah, he makes quick work with players with that P250. He had a glorious 3K on Nuke versus Heroic earlier today. I think that was Ariel. Oh, sorry, you're right. Ariel, yeah. yeah. Well, they're all talented friends. Like you said, it's hard to pick out the weaker link. Okay, let's get into it. We've got four rounds of difference. Buy up for both teams. Bravado need to get their head on straight. They've won Ecos. They've got back into this game. If it not for the pistols, we'd be tied or Bravado would even be winning, potentially, depending on where they stood after those set, after those set pistol rounds. So but they got to remember that. They've been good at applying pressure to Ivy. They have already taken ladder control this early into the round. That is a big find. Ariel's already splitting up, splitting up his attention because he doesn't feel confident that there are proper eyes on Tcon to cover him, which might be a flaw in the setup. We'll see. Those eco wins are enough to keep Bravado in contention. They just seem to struggle in the gun rounds. They've lost a player to Alu's op. They're sitting amidst the ladder. No pressure, no rush. Plenty of time to work out, and they'll do so. Right into Ariel's crosshair. He's able to take one. Fady then close proximity drops him, and it's just the trade train all the way forward. Back into a two versus two, but Alu alive. And a great clutch player at that. Honing in on Sonic, just face to face oh, there. Touching each other's oh barrels. Oh my god, like ships in the night. And from that, he backstabs Detrini. Sonic can surprise him, sure enough. But Sonic, Sonic doesn't know where Sergei's at, and the patience, not entirely there. Yeah, that was a, such a precarious spot. He knew that up against the wall, there was another player outside, but he didn't know if Alu was going to leave his vision or even turn around. Like, he could right. wait, but he might look even dumber if Alu spins up and, and realizes that maybe there was a flank through Ivy. Unfortunate situation with them passing through each other in the smoke, but uh, that's the name of the game. That's going to happen sometimes. I'm surprised enough that he didn't see his barrel, but we've got different smokes. I like the positioning there from Alu on the B site. You see it. JT, he just peeks deep brown, mm -hmm. trying to anticipate someone on spools. But because Alu is halfway up upper against the wall, more than just the elbow shows, and he finds it with the first bullet. And that's what happens with Alu. You give him an inch, he'll take a mile. Centimeters, kilometers. No, I'm glad you it. stuck with you. You were, you know, you, you stuck with Imperial, so that's good. Let's see what happens next. Bravado much quicker this round, trying to trickle inwards, and Ariel's gonna deny it with just his SMG. The ump's paying off. Elusive with a response, but at the cost of more than half his health. What's more? They've been bottled in because of these smokes. Everybody's just trying to pile up upon the bomb. Shots both ways and still further damage. But Detrini alive, barely. JT's flash blinds Sergei. Not that he goes for the peak or misses any action. Ents content to sit and wait. Yeah, they don't have to do much now. They've got spot. I think they have vision on the bomb this entire time with Sergei right here in ladder room. He at a certain point will be maybe aware of some late ladder play, but he knows and he has inventory of where these two players were last known. And it's such a big rotate around. With time on the clock, Bravado definitely want to try to wait this out as long as possible. Go for some type of long con play, but here's, here's Sergei. Just wait for the drop. Don't know if this will come out. We'll see. JT has the HP to fall. And oh, he instead uh, plays it safe. Make sure to find out if there's somebody there. He is going to be correct about that. Actually, here's the the pin on the on the smoke get pulled, and he's like, here's an opportunity. 2v2 now, and the flank is out. Detrini gets a kill, leaving just Alu alone. Finds that first one, spots the second body, but that's the bomb carrier to cross on over, and Alu's going to charge him down. He stampedes forward and takes the high ground. Now he's going to have to work around these corners, but remember, the barrel of his off is long. The shot's still there. It's going to come down to just the peak. Not exposing himself as of yet. They're dancing. 
It's the dance of death back and forth. Alu now with half the bomb gone, oh. and he hits that. Damn. The 1v2. Much pressure, no problem. Alu, 24 kills. The white death himself. And he never even breaks a sweat. Not even, yeah. Definitely comes with the territory with a player like this. You know, ice in the veins. I mean, it's a great player to have, and like that, that clutch ability on a guy that I think is already supposed to be the figurehead of this team, right? For sure. Like the rest of Ents, they 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 are very adamant about it. Like he fires yeah. them up. Yeah. He fuels this team. He is a core. It was built around him. Mm -hmm. You know, he took the chance. Remember, this is a player that used to be on phase, NIP. working in the international scene. Mm -hmm. He goes back for that finish counter strike. Hell of a drug. And look what they have done. 15 rounds versus the nine of Bravado. And with a four-man stack up towards Ivy, they're going to challenge this, but it's a two-piece setup from Ents. And of course, Aldu on the receiving end. Smoke down, scope up, and yes, the corner player comes wide. The frag grenade could do substantial damage, and it's going to soften up three. I loved how Al uses smoke last time, and oh, he sees the barrel of a gun. He actually shoots the hand right off of JT, leaving just elusive now to die. Reloads in and he's ready to go. Tidbits of utility and a push outwards, but he's being flanked right now. Sergey's got him dead to right. That's Ents taking train and establishing themselves an advantage in this grand final series. Again, it's their pick. We expect great things from them. They have shown already this weekend that they are competent, but as have Bravado. And we'll be moving on to Inferno, where they showcased their talents versus existence earlier today. Yeah. That match went into overtime, which makes me a little worried. It's not as though we know uh, Ents to be a super strong Inferno team, but mm -hmm. they're just strong in general, Launders. Yeah. And even that could be enough. Yeah, and the same thing for Bravado. I think they brought a team to overtime were able to win on Inferno, so it might not be their map of choice, but I think they'll have a lot to show for it and could have been a game of Ecos. A couple of pistols go the way of Ents. Bravado still looked good in spots. And so I'm, prom I'm, I'm, sh I'm seeing promise for sure. Nice. So we'll be back with that second map. But first, we'll give this one back over to the analysts and see if they can make sense of all those Ecos. We could start to do that or we could just continue to say it's easy for Ents, easy for Ents, easy for Ents, easy for Ents. But I'm not going to do that. Because then you that just would, did it. You just did it, man. You're right. That was kind of the point. Either way, yeah, it looked pretty easy for Ents right there, dare I say. They were in the driver's seat of that. It almost kind of seemed like Bravado never had uh, any sort of control over that whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, if you look at, I mean, it is the map coming in from Ents, right? And if you look at the CD side, it, it, sorry, the T side, which just started off at 10 rounds, that's a quite a lot of rounds to get on T side. The problem with Bravado where they were playing very reactive, they really didn't pressure. Mm -hmm. The thing with Ents, Ensis T-Siders, you need to kind of suffocate them. Don't give them the freedom and the space to work with. They had so many opportunities to do that. And then again, Sergey and Alu fragging out of their minds. Everyone is putting in work. And it required Bravado to have some miraculous rounds, like for example, the eco round with the Deagle here and there, pulling off some big clutches to kind of kind of bring it back a little closer. But I think by the end of the first half, everyone kind of you know expected that uh, that particular game to go the way of Ents. Yeah, I definitely, definitely don't disagree. Uh, I think it was not the most beautiful Counter-Strike game. As said, there was a lot of Ecos that uh, went back and forth. And I think that was a little bit uh, uncharacteristic for the Ents guys. That said, though, they show the strengths once again. You know, when it gets into those uncontrollable situations, they find a way back to find that common collective way of approaching the game. And as you said, I think they were the better team and they were in the driver's seat throughout the entire game. Sergey, Elo, all of them, Ariel for that matter as well. You know, I like to see this team play and I like them more and more for every single time I see them because I really realize how good these guys are individually wise. They can hold yeah. up for their own, they can hold up, you know, and they can turn around rounds where it's a four versus three or where it's a four versus four in an unfavorable situation. I never feel instance out of it and that's one of the things I like the most about this team. Yeah, it's when you find a player with his back against the wall, it seems like he's always making the right decision mm. individually and you have to know that that's, that's on his laurels, that's on his fundamentals approaching the game. Exactly. And for what it's worth, there, it, it seems to work out every single single time for Ents. Sort of like these numbers work out. Alu coming alive here on map number one, boasting 24 frags, and I can give you guys a little bit of an inside info. I know what they had for lunch before this. Avocados. Burgers. Oh. They had burgers. That's right. I was talking to the Ents staff a little bit. You're an yeah. American, so it doesn't the surprise me that you like that. Trace. Oh, I'm just saying, you know, it worked for them. Could work for you at home, or you could just grab a Monster Energy. Well, really maybe that's what NA is doing wrong. They're not eating enough burgers before the events. I don't know. Basically, yeah, something like that, Jacob. Something Thank like you very that. Much. Well, you look at the scoreboard. You just want to point out one thing before you move on in your life, Trace, which uh, would be <laughs> cool. Fade A with eight entry facts. That's pretty impressive, considering that was not a game where they really got the space to work with, and that was yeah. not a game where they filled it as a team. He still managed to find eight entry kills for the team. That was
was pretty impressive. Yeah, absolutely. The, the thing with Fede is he is the, the designated entry fragger for this mm. team, right? And uh, he, uh, I think the best takeaway for Bravado at the end of this tournament, whether they win or whether they you know come second here, I think it would be the fact that Fede has been, in my opinion, the, the find for that particular team. Well, Inferno will be the next map, but before we get there, we need to go to the stars. That's right, grab yourself an Astro Gaming headset. And in fact, they're giving one away. Would you believe it? Head over to the link you see on your screen. We're going to hold it up there for just a second so that you can get your fingers in the right keys and type it right in on that tab that you just opened up because you're so excited. You know that you want some of this Astro gear. And moreover, it's powering all the stage communication. That's right. Enz is using it, and they're winning. And perhaps you can do the same. Who knows? You should try it anyway. So we're going to go to Inferno. When we come back, you want to make sure you're here with us. It's not going to be much longer. We're going to jump right back into the action. So we'll be right back to the DreamHack Open Grand Finals. Ents looking to close it out in two, and we'll see if they can do just that. 